This is all about helping people heal. And we got to start right now with us. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so welcome. Good morning. And we hope you're ready for some healing and some comfort and some love, because that's what you get when you have the Holy Spirit and his fire and his power that is going to rest with you today. And so I just want to pray right now, Heavenly Father, bring your fire, bring your spirit, rain on us right now, Lord, rain your Holy Spirit, the only spirit that can overcome, Lord, any circumstance, any situation, God, they can heal bodies, they can save people from the wicked. And Lord, we know you can literally be the redeemer of all things because you are the redeemer, Lord. We thank you for who you are, the love that you give, because your love is so perfect that nothing could ever replace the love of Christ. So we thank you, God, right now for who you are in Jesus' name. And as we come into the presence of the spirit, we are going to give thanksgiving by worshiping and praising your name in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. So Hannah, please help us reign in God's spirit and let's worship together right now. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Good morning. So I'm going to start with this song called Radiant God a song that I wrote when I was looking at this beautiful sunset and I just thought, wow, God, that's just a reflection of who you are. And that's what the Holy Spirit is about in our lives. He, the Holy Spirit is about um, coming to fill us up to reach the world for, for him. The day of Pentecost, people got filled and they went out to the streets uh, God may call you to the streets or he may just call you to your family or those in your life. But no matter what, we're supposed to be full of him. So in the bridge, it, it, it talks about how God radiates with love and beauty and with strength and how we want all of that to flow through us. So Jesus, I do pray, as Amber prayed, that we would have more of you, more of you, Holy Spirit. Come illuminate our lives. Praise you, Jesus.
again with faith that God will fall afresh on us with surrendered hearts that say yes melt me mold me fill me use me we surrender our lives to you we pray that you would fill us up that we would be empowered to fulfill the destiny and the plans that you have for us that we would have your courage and your love to shine for you in this world God Holy Spirit oh we need you we need your wisdom we need your your promptings we need your anointing we need the miracles to flow through us and we need your fruit we need love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, and self-control. We need the world to see you in us, shine through us. Thank you, Jesus. We pray for a fresh Pentecost. Fill us up and use us for your glory. In Jesus' name, we praise you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord God. I just want to thank you once again for the gift, the greatest gift that you gave to us, the Holy Spirit, the one that helps us through the hard times, the one that comforts us, the one that shows us who you are, where your, how your heart is for us, God. And so I just want to thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you for Jesus who died on a cross to send the spirit of the Lord to be with each and every one of us. And that would be in all of our testimonies. The moment that we changed was the moment that the Holy Spirit touched our life. And so I am encouraged that God is going to touch everyone's life today, that he's going to plant a seed in this video that will show who his spirit is through us and that it will be glorified in Jesus name. And we want to read Proverbs 18, 16. A gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. So God knows the power of a gift because he gave us the greatest gift and he gave us the greatest power through the Holy Spirit. He doesn't need to institute any church tax. He doesn't need to institute any forced love because he knows that everyone will want to give. Everyone will want to love God because of the gift that God gave us 
and the blessings that come from believing and, and knowing the Holy Spirit. And so we understand how God works and that he works through the prospering of our free will. He's not going to force you, but that he's going to know that you will because of the blessings that come from the Holy Spirit. And the reason he does that is he wants you to be reminded that when you press in with faith, even though you don't know or maybe you're even worried to give, or you think negative things around it, God said, a man shall give, and it will usher in the presence of the great. And so today I am going to ask that you, out of your free will, knowing that God is with you and that he is good, that you will want to be blessed and usher in the spirit by being a giver. And that could be a giver of many things, a giver of talents, a gift, a gift of prophecy, whatever your gifts are, God has given you a gift. And I know that this is Proverbs, so it's a ton of downloads of wisdom. So if you continue to read in Proverbs, God's just going to keep downloading wisdom. And so this is a very wise word. So I'm going to be listening to this word today, and I'm going to be ushering in the presence of the Lord through my gift. And so I pray that for you today. It's so heavenly father, we thank you that you don't force us to do anything. You blessed us with a gift, the Holy spirit. And we honor that today, Lord, we are blessed to have the opportunity to, to usher in your presence, Lord. And so today is an opportunity for each and every one of us to give and however that looks, Lord, we ask that you continue to grow the love of God through their gift, that they will feel confident and, and they will feel loved and they will feel the presence and the blessings that come from your spirit when they usher in the spirit of the Lord. And so we thank you that today is Pentecost, that we honor your spirit, that we are thankful for your spirit, Lord, and that you will bless us and we don't need to worry where the money will come from, because you would have instituted so many things if you were worried. We are not worried, Lord. We know that you are working. We know there's people out there who understand the gift of giving, Lord. And so we pray that on the hearts of the people who may feel uncomfortable about that, Lord, that they will learn to trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. And we have many ways if you'd like to give to our ministry, you can give on our website, healinglifechurch.com, our mobile app, Uncommon Provision, which I just was recently looking at some of our videos and have to say they're really good. So go check those out and on Venmo under Healing Life. And that's how I give. But today is about Jesus. It's about the Holy Spirit and how we can overcome all things through Jesus and the spirit that he left when he left this earth. And we are thankful for that. So Pastor Dean, let's download some of that Holy Spirit wisdom. <laughs> Thank you, Amber. <clears throat> In the name of Jesus Christ. I command all who are listening right now, I command the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, who has been giving us the, the wisdom and the strength and the faith to believe in him. Lord, you said that we are not led into temptation, but we are delivered from evil. And Lord, that's a command, that's in the imperative in the Greek. That is a statement of fact. It is a, I am here now to affirm that the Holy Spirit of God will heal you. He is not messing around. He's not going to play a game. He's not going to try to, to tease this out, to make it a test of faith. He loves you. He loves us. And he wants us healed. And he will heal us. Jesus died on the cross 
so that we could have him, the Holy Spirit of God. And he is powerful. He's not some wimpy spirit that goes around casting spells and does a bunch of nonsense like some of these demons. He's directly from the Father himself, from Father God. He is the implementer of life on this planet. And Jesus is watching over him and, and giving him words to say and directions and purpose so that he can have the result of us overcoming. We are overcomers. You will overcome this illness. You will shy it away. Just shoot it away. Goodbye, COVID. Goodbye, cancer. Goodbye. <clears throat> I'm a child of God. And it does not belong in me or in my home. Lord, you, Lord Jesus, you prayed for us that you would not, you asked your Father to not take us out of the world, but keep us in the world and protect us from the world. And if I know my Father God at all, I know he loves you and he will answer your prayers. I thank you. Now I have a <clears throat> I have a sermon all set, but when I found out that Amber just a few minutes ago contracted COVID, her husband is recovering from it. Now she's got it. And I say this scourge, this plague is not meant for us. Plagues are sent by God for reasons beyond my comprehension but it is not meant for us. Like the Passover, the Jewish people have it right. The blood of the lamb placed on the doorposts and the lentil, the spirit of death passes us by. And that blood shed on Calvary by Jesus Christ himself, that blood is powerful because it directs the Holy Spirit to heal, not to destroy, but to heal. We call ourselves the Healing Life Church because that's what he does. Now you may, we have gone through all of these different areas of life. Oh, the mental domain, the, the physical, the spiritual, the, the cellular, the environmental, the financial, all these problems swirling around us. Who is able to master all of it? One, one person given by God the power to be able to do that, the Holy Spirit of God. He is the one and he lives with us. He lives inside of us. To accept him is to accept life itself. There's a choice when you're ill to succumb to it, to make it your master, or to stomp on it, put it down where it belongs, at the foot of the cross, under the authority of and the power of Jesus Christ, who heals. He can't help himself. He's like me. I'm a physician. He's like me. He can't help himself. You call on him, he'll be there. Simple prayer, Jesus, help me. Cry it out, Jesus, help me. And he will send his Holy Spirit filled with fire to burn away the sin, burn away the evil, burn away the illness. Just fry it. Now, there are many ways to heal. I remember Jeannie and I, as chaplains, walked in to a lady who was dying of cancer. She was the pastor's wife, the mother of four children, and everyone on the island knew her, was praying for her, including us. And we loved her. And as I walked in to that room to pray for her, I asked the Lord, Lord, this is a woman who deserves to be healed and put back into her church, into her family, into service for you. 
Heal her, Lord. I asked for healing. And mystery, the mystery of the wisdom of God like was swirling around me. Where was the key? What would I say? What could I do? I brought the Bible. I, I stood on the scriptures. I did everything that I knew to do. And the Lord, the Holy Spirit came to me and said, Dean, don't fight me now. I know her. I know her husband. I know her family. And I know her plan. Father God has a plan for her. Don't fight me. She's coming upstairs with me. And we'll handle everything else. And everything will work out fine. And I began to cry. Jeannie and I looked at each other. And we looked at her. And we began to cry. We couldn't even say a word. And she looked at me and she said, he told you, didn't he? She knew. So sometimes illness results in physical death, but not in the spiritual death that is so rampant in this culture right now. The worshiping of false gods, the practicing of witchcraft, the honoring of Satan and of all of these false gods. I mean, I look at the media right now, it is deranged. And it's seeking after power from, from evil. It's deranged. Rebuke it. It does not have any place. And it, it brings you a spirit of death. So I want to share with you today some scriptures, okay? The scriptures in the Bible, the Bible is a beautiful manual of life, a teacher of love. If I can teach you or tell you anything at all, God loves you. The Holy Spirit is here because he loves you. He wants to help and he will help. So Father God has a plan. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord God Almighty. Plans through his Holy Spirit to prosper you and not harm you. Plan to give you hope and a future, a future in eternity. When you realize this, then you will call on me and come and pray to me. And I, and my spirit, through my spirit, will listen to you. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. And I, the Holy Spirit, will be found by you. You see, Jesus died on the cross. He said it very clearly. He said, unless I die on this cross, unless I become the Passover lamb, unless my blood is shed for you and then put on the altar of God to cleanse you, to heal you, to bring you home, my Father will not send the Holy Spirit. But when I do this, I will. I will send the Holy Spirit. And you know something about Jesus? His promises are good. They're solid. He doesn't mess around. He doesn't promise and then renege. He doesn't share something that's false. He is a straight shooter. So, you know, John the Baptist recognized this. And he saw, he saw something that in the spirit was very important for us to remember and to recognize. The Holy Spirit doesn't come with advice. Oh, he has wisdom, but that's not, he doesn't come with, with like a, gee, maybe you should do this, or maybe you should do that. Or, oh dear, you're in trouble. Oh dear, oh dear. You know, I'm a surgeon. If I played that game, when I walked into the operating room, people would die. You don't mess around when people are bleeding to death from the, you, you bring them into the emergency room, you see them bleeding to death, you bring them up to the operating room, you stop the bleeding, stop the sin, stop the death. That's the role of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't come mincing around. He comes with power. And this is what John said. I, John, baptize you with water for repentance. And don't get me wrong. Water baptism is good. Always a first step, you know. 
But after me comes one who is more powerful than I, Jesus, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He, Jesus, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Fire is power. It's an unbelievable power beyond our comprehension that raises people from the dead. Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone their sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Translating that, you then become powerful. Casting out evil, healing the sick, raising the dead. The Holy Spirit does the work. You're his instrument. Because, you know what? He's not really using, you know, when I walk in the operating room, I have a scalpel. That's an instrument. It's inanimate. It's more like you're partnering with him. You're sharing life with him. The Holy Spirit is a person who loves you, representing the Father God who created you and his Son who saves you. He is powerful. He has fire. And that fire can burn through any chaff and refine the gold that becomes a glory to God. Your lives are worth it. Yeah. You are worth it. We're worthy of being loved and overcoming. I guarantee it. It's worked in, he has worked in my life and proven it. I am a surgeon. I do not mess around. And if I see something that's false, out it goes. There's nothing false here, except for an enemy who wants to teach you the ways of evil and separate you from the power of and the love of the Holy Spirit. That's his role in life. I don't know why, but he's, he's just a mess. He's a hot mess. Okay, so Jesus knew what he was doing when he even started his ministry. He knew because he had planned it. Jesus is an eternal being who became human. He was alive for billions of years. He helped his father create this earth. And through genetic engineering and DNA, he created us. And 500 years before he came to this planet, Daniel had a vision of him going to his father, talking about the plan of what he was going to do. So he was hiding. I love Jesus. He didn't want anybody to know that he was the Messiah. He just wanted to like, have a normal life for a while until it was time. So he tried to hide, didn't work. He started healing people and they started blabbing and everybody went around saying, there's a guy over there in Nazareth and he prays for you and he heals you. Ah, okay, they all started lining up. This reminds me of my clinic. <laughs> so he was starting his ministry and he quoted Isaiah and he was quoting about the Holy Spirit. Listen to this, listen to what he said that his assignment was. This is his, these are his marching orders. This is his mission on life, okay? This is in Luke 4, 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, the Holy Spirit of the Lord is on me. You see, he was working just like us with the Holy Spirit. Because he has anointed me, and I anoint you, the, those who are listening now, the same anointing to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim and to implement freedom, freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, the blessing of God. Well, what's he setting us free from? Why do we need to be able to have our eyes open? You see, this world, it's not what it seems. This isn't our world. This is God's world. And he's created life on this planet for his own pleasure. He enjoys it. He likes a fish floating around and it's purple and he decides, hey, let's put some yellow spots on it so that it looks even 
better. So Jeannie and I are snorkeling and we see the fish with the yellow spots. We go, wow, good job, God. Like, wow, how did you do that? Okay. So he loves life and he loves you and he wants you to heal. He wants you to be whole and healthy and represent him. And that's why he wants you set free. And that's why he sent his son. But what did he set you free from? Why are you oppressed? Why are you feeling like you're unable to overcome? That's the work of an enemy. So you see, it's a necessary thing that we go through this. It's like training souls for heaven. It's like giving us the strength of faith to overcome an enemy, an enemy of God and us, Satan. So, so it's, it has to do with the truth, okay? He's going through this process and he recognizes that we're all very confused down here. I mean, why in the world would anyone want us want to worship a, a demon or a false god or or a mute idol he said very truly i tell you it's good for you that i'm going away i go away the advocate will not come when he comes he will prove the world to be wrong about sin and righteousness the prince of this world satan now stands condemned the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all truth. Interestingly, he said, he will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And who is he hearing from? He's sent by Father God at the request of Jesus Christ. So he's hearing the actual words of God himself. And he will prophesy and he will give you wisdom and, and tell you what is to come. And in the process, he will make you whole and healthy, and that will glorify Jesus. That was the mission, and it still is, 2,000 years later. So this is all very confusing. It was unheard of back in Jesus' time. In fact, so many people now, billions of people, still don't understand. They get sick both in their spirit and in their physical form, and they die. Unfortunately, they either go into the grave and go to sleep, or worse, they'll go to hell. They just don't understand. And what we're trying to do is wake them up. Well, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus who didn't understand, and he had the wisdom of going and asking Jesus, hey, what's up? I don't understand. Help me to ex explain it to me. Explain what you're doing here and why you're doing it and what this whole thing about the Holy Spirit is. So this is in John 3. So the Pharisee named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council, he came to Jesus at night and he said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. You see, Jesus was healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out evil spirits. You know that before Jesus, there was no casting out of evil spirits. They had full reign. Jesus showed us deliverance. He showed us to be able to fight evil. Oh, that our leaders would understand this and fight evil. Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Holy Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, gives birth to spirit. And remember that fire? That's the power, the power to heal life. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. Well, that's probably the most overused and misunderstood term in the Christian world. Born again does not automatically mean that you're going to be in the family of God. Many people are, are born of the Spirit, and some choose to follow evil. Witches, warlocks, soothsayers, 
fortune tellers, sorcerers, people that have built covens and issued in the evil. They're spiritually alive. They've been spiritually born, but they've chosen to be in the world of evil. Those people are not just ignorant, they're dangerous because they advocate their spiritual world. You see, there's, there's, there's a enemy, there's in the spiritual world, there's two kinds of spirits. Let's make it really simple, okay? Two kinds of spirits. One spirit is for you, loves you and will heal you. The other will trick you, deceive you, and make you sick and make you dead. Even though you're alive, you will be dead. Jesus said, let the dead bury their dead. He was right. You think it's an accident that people are shooting up, overdosing on, on uh, fentanyl? Can't hold a job because of alcoholism? They're tormented and they are, they need to be set free. Just like Jesus said, right? Set free. Heal them, Lord. Heal us all, because all of us have traces of that in our hearts. There isn't a human being alive that doesn't have that challenge. And that's why we have to become overcomers. And that's why the Holy Spirit is here. Even though we die, we live. Even though we sin, we are forgiven and taught not to sin anymore. <laughs> I learned that lesson. Boy. So born again does not guarantee you a ticket to heaven. Born again gives you the opportunity to choose which spiritual realm you want to live in. And nobody, nobody should be choosing to live with Satan. He's an idiot. He's vanquished. He has been defeated over and over again. And in this world right now, right now, he is trying to manifest a power that is beyond our comprehension, controlling governments. And it's totally inappropriate. God is sovereign. This is his planet. We are his people. We are his creation. Satan does not have the authority or power unless we give it to him. And it's time for us to stand up. We call for repentance. Well, that's just the first step. We need to push him out. You know, when you're fire, in a jet fire and, and the, the pilot, you know, determines that it's, it's going down, he pushes this eject button and he blows off the canopy and it blows them out of that disaster and it gives them like a, a sweet ride on a parachute down to the earth. Well, we need to eject Satan. He's not going to leave on his own. He loves this. It gives him great joy to see us being tormented with this COVID nonsense and the, and the people of this world fighting each other and calling each other racist and what a bunch of idiots. One race, one creator, and one savior. All the rest eject it out in the name of Jesus. This would not be happening unless God loves us. You see, As a physician, I would sit there and listen to a person's tale of woe. I remember one, well, I won't go, the, the, the point I'm trying to make is that without love, there's no healing. The love of God, the love of God, not the love of money, the love of pleasure, the love of all this other stuff, it's the love of God. Love him and he'll heal you. Simple. Be healed. Be healed. COVID 
gone in the name of Jesus. Pain gone. Yes. In the name of Jesus. So, so Jesus knew that we'd get confused. And by sending the Holy Spirit, he would have to have power beyond the fire that does the miraculous. He would have to teach us to be wise. I love that. When I was in medical school, they taught me how to be wise and to treat just what was needed to be treated and no more. And then the Lord taught me to heal the whole person, not just the illness, but the family, the whole person and the family, because that's a Christian physician. And our prayers are like that. Well, listen to, listen to what Paul talks about. Now, Paul had an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit and planted churches and did a great job proclaiming the gospel. He was and is, he is alive. He, he is one of the most powerful and wonderful writers in the Bible. And listen to what he said about the Holy Spirit. He said, there are different kinds of gifts from the Holy Spirit. But the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service. You see, the gifts are not meant to be held and, and hoarded. They're meant to go out and be of service, just like we're praying for you right now. There are different kinds of service, different kinds of purpose, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working. In other words, you actually work and you get paid for it. Hey, how about that? But all of them and everyone is in the same God and the God, and God is using all of us at his job to steward life. Bring the family home. Now to each one, manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. The common good is love. The love of God. The one to one there is given through the spirit, a, a message of wisdom, another knowledge, another faith, another healing, miraculous powers, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits to another, speaking in different kinds of tongues and to another interpreting of tongues. These are all very, very, I call them like a show. It's like, oh my, let's see what's gonna to happen today. But of those, all those gifts and faith, hope, and love, the greatest is love. Father God would have never created us if he didn't love us and want us to be with him forever in heaven. You see, this is a, a chance. It's a chance for a created being who has mortality to go and become immortal and become part of the family. Precious. And Jesus saw it going sideways and he said I'll go down there and die for them and send the Holy Spirit so that we have at least a chance of saving them so Paul said this in Galatians so I Paul say walk by the Holy Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the spirit of death spirit of life the Holy Spirit spirit of death Satan and the demons, all the fallen angels, all of the lying and deceiving ones, right? Okay, simple. Choose the spirit of life. For the flesh, the spirit of death, desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with one another. You know you shouldn't do it, but you go ahead and do it. You'll learn your lesson. But if you ask Jesus, he'll forgive you and teach you never to do it again. That's called repentance. So that you know, so that you don't do whatever you want. But if you're led by the Holy Spirit, you're not under the law. You're not under the spirit of death. Okay, that's who we're overcoming. To be an overcomer is to grab hold of and hold on to life. The healing that comes with it is spectacular. Living in heaven with God and doing work with him, is spectacular. A lot better than hell, guaranteed. 
But that conflict, that conflict is what we have to overcome. We have to choose which side we're on. The spirit of life, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of death, Satan. Now, if you're choosing Satan, this is what's going to happen. Okay, in Galatians 5, Paul does a good job of listing out just some of them. Jesus did it too. There's plenty of evidence that it's evil or bad. The acts of the spirit of death are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live by this will not inherit the kingdom of God or walk with the Holy Spirit. Rather, they will die in their sin. When you think about what's happening right now in politics, that's being manifested. I've never seen this country so divided over nonsense. At least in World War II, we came together and fought Hitler and won. This enemy is inside of us. We are being taken down from the inside. And fighting this is going to be much more difficult. That's the role that we have to play as Christians through love and forgiveness and a firmness of saying no to those who would advocate sin, not just for themselves, but then they try to push it into us and into our families. No. Go your way. Do not attack us. The Holy Spirit brings about a change, a transformation in the character, a change in the way that we live. And those changes are evident. Listen to the fruit of the Holy Spirit. First and foremost, this is in Galatians 5, first and foremost is love. Without the love of God, and that's the love of God, and the love for each other in God, in the name of Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, that love, joy, it brings peace, patience and forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Even though you're sick, even though you have COVID, this will bring about a healing. Against such things, there is no law. No disease can steal that from you. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Holy Spirit, we live with the Holy Spirit, we invite him into our life and into our very being. Let us keep in step with him. Let's listen to him and do what he says. We'll live forever. So, what is love? The love of God is very special. It doesn't lead us into sin. Rather, it heals us from sin. It doesn't lead us into illness. It heals us of illness. It doesn't destroy life. It creates life. It doesn't destroy the family. It heals the family. Okay? It always protects. Listen to what Paul said about it. If I, Paul, speak in tongues of men and angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong. In other words, I'm useless. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries of knowledge, and I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. The love of God. The love of God is patient. It's kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others, and it does not dishonor our Father in heaven period. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love and the Holy Spirit who implements it never fails. He never fails. Jesus said, I have lost none of them except for the one to fulfill the scriptures. 
Judas. He won't lose you. He'll carry you through and he'll be proud of you. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. This is my daughter in whom I am well pleased. To overcome is the, it's like a, a pearl of great price, a treasure buried in a field. It's the best. And you can't do it without the Holy Spirit. That's what Pentecost was all about. The love that helps you overcome. The Holy Spirit loves you. There's no question about it. All you have to do is open your heart and accept him. To accept the Holy Spirit, you know that you can go to church, you can read the Bible, and you can do all these things that are mechanistic, but not the real deal. The real deal is done on your bed or at the foot of your bed kneeling. I like the fetal position myself <laughs> because I'm a child. I'm a child of God. But that's what you have to do. You have to receive Jesus Christ. To all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, he has given them the right to become children of God and the right to receive the Holy Spirit. And that's, what's, that's all you have to do. Just say the simple prayer. Dear Jesus, help. Yes. I need your help. I open my heart to you. Forgive me for my sin. Help me to live above it. Bring your Holy Spirit and let him live in me, with me, and in my family. And heal, heal me, Lord. This is a healing life sermon. This is for healing the sick. Open your heart. Ask Jesus to heal you. And he will be faithful. He is a faithful God. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. So that you may overflow with hope by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit of God. The Lord Jesus bless you and keep you safe. The Lord make his face and his Holy Spirit shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. And I add, Lord, heal them. Please heal them. Take them, hold them, love them, heal them, and bring them home. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 <clears throat> now we have some friends in Pakistan and they they're building a ministry in a church in a school right in the middle of Muslim land. <laughs> And they want to sing a worship song. And they want to sing a worship song. So the Lord bless them and give them your spirit. Great spirit. Go for it, guys. Okay, here we go.